Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is a couple of weeks away from marking his first year in office. A new NHK poll suggests his popularity is the lowest it's been since he returned to the top job. Our interviewers spoke to more than 1,000 people by phone. 50% said they support Abe's cabinet, a drop of 10 percentage points from last month. 35% said they don't. Our poll asked for feedback on the new secrecy law Abe's Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner approved last Friday. The law gives the government more power to decide what people can and can't know. 58% of respondents said they disapprove of the law. 32% said they approve of it. 59% said the discussion over the bill by Diet members wasn't sufficient. 8% said lawmakers had a thorough discussion. 74% of respondents said they are worried the law may infringe on the public's right to know. Abe spoke on Monday and addressed the criticism over the new law. <laughs> I sincerely recognize the citizens' severe criticism as a reprimand. I should have taken more time to explain the bill. But the problem lies in the fact that we lacked rules to decide what constitutes a secret and how to keep secrets classified. Prime Minister Abe was focused on getting the secrecy law approved as soon as possible. NHK World's Mayako Ambe told us earlier why and outlines the case against the law. The Prime Minister saw the bill as inseparable from the National Security Council. Uh, government leaders have argued that they needed an organization that would enable them to make decisions on security and diplomacy quickly. They modeled their council on the one in the U.S. The NSC will coordinate intelligence among ministries and agencies and take a central role in crisis management. Members held their first meeting last week. The council will collect and analyze highly classified information Japan receives from the U.S. and other countries. To do this, Abe needed to show Japan's allies that the government can be trusted to protect such information. Abe wanted to push both bills through before the Diet session ended last week. Opposition members demanded more time for discussion. The ruling parties extended the session for two days, then went ahead with the vote. Why are so many lawmakers opposed to the law? Uh, many lawmakers say the law gives the government too much power to decide what the public can and can't know. Uh, they argue that the definition of a state secret has become too vague and too broad. Many voters had grown tired of the cycle of unstable politics they'd seen for years. That came to an end when they handed Abe control of the upper house in an election in July. The ruling coalition now has control of both houses and can push through policies without worrying about the opposition. But this poll suggests voters may not support this kind of decision making. And it suggests Abe could lose public support if he takes similar approaches in the future. Japan's Environment and Reconstruction Ministers will visit towns near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They're hoping the communities will agree to host intermediate storage sites for hazardous waste. The government is planning to build the facilities the towns of Futaba, Okuma, Okuma and Naraha. The buildings will be designed to hold radioactive soil and debris collected during decontamination work. Government officials conducted feasibility studies of the land and an expert panel concluded that the towns are geologically capable of hosting the sites.
Community leaders have agreed to the studies but have yet to give their consent to move forward with the plan. Some residents oppose it. We'll give residents a clear description of the proposed location and size of the facility. Senior Vice Environment Minister Shinji Inoue said he hopes to secure permission from the towns as soon as possible. Government officials plan to start storing radioactive waste in the facilities in January 2015. Their ministers will also meet the mayor of Tomioka, another town near the plant. The community already hosts a disposal facility. They plan to ask the town to accept waste with 100,000 backrolls or less of radioactive substances per kilogram. It's been almost three years since the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident, but people in the area still fear the risk of cancer and other illnesses caused by consuming contaminated food and drink. More than 320,000 people in the prefecture have already been tested for internal contamination with a device called the whole body counter. But the device was designed to test adults. It can't be used for infants because they're too small. In response to this problem, scientists developed a new testing device for babies. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. Tests for radiation exposure for infants began at a hospital in Hirata village. Over 30 families showed up for the tests. I have been so worried. I've been waiting a long time for my baby to be checked. I don't know what will happen when my baby grows up, so I'd like this checkup. Yumi Takahara lives 80 kilometers from the nuclear plant. She has long been worried about the effects of the radiation on her three daughters. Manami, the youngest, is six months old. I'd feel safer if my baby were checked at a younger age. This new device is called Baby Scan. It measures the internal radiation level of an infant placed inside it. Infants undergoing the radiation check are placed in this compartment where they remain for four minutes. The machine has a relatively wide opening and children can watch their parents during the checkup, which helps them stay relaxed. Professor Ryugo Hayano of University of Tokyo headed the research team that developed the scanner. He says the main challenge was to make it as precise as possible. Even though the baby or the children are having eating the same amount of radioactive cesium as, uh, as compared to, to parents, the, the amount of radioactive cesium accumulated in the body will be much less. In order to, uh, to quantify the, uh, the amount of radioactive cesium in the body, it doesn't make sense to measure uh, with the same detection limit as, as used for, ch for adults. The machine makes meticulous calculations and is designed to block as much external radiation as possible. It has four radiation sensors, twice as many as previous models. Takahara was anxious to hear the results of the scan. Manami was put into the machine. She cried a bit because she had to be away from her mother for several minutes. But her body was successfully measured and the examination was completed. The results came in minutes later. No cesium is detected. As you must stop. 
We have been eating a variety of foods, so that was my main concern. I am very relieved to hear this positive result. A thousand people have already made appointments to have their children examined. Thanks to this machine, those most vulnerable to radiation, infants, are finally beginning to get the protection they need. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World, Fukushima. A fire breaks out at the nuclear one plant in Russellville. Entergy Arkansas officials telling Fox 16 News the early morning transformer fire is contained at this hour, so some good news there. They say oil is still burning, though, but emergency crews are working to let it burn itself out. Energy says the fire led to Unit 2 being taken offline. Plant officials say today's fire never posed any danger to the community.